The commercialization of sport has progressed within the past half century and turned into what we see today as a multi-billion dollar company filled with athletes sponsoring pizza places and companies spending millions for their commercial to be aired during the Super Bowl. The role of commercialization does not only occur in professional sports, although this is where we see a majority of companies advertising their products. It dives deeper into even the earliest stages of sport, and that is our youth. It is becoming more common in the United States for youth sports to take the shape of a pay-to-play program, meaning that students who want to participate must pay fees in order to play. To those who can afford it, this may not seem like a large issue, but for those middle-class families who are in some cases already struggling to get by, this is a make or break for their child's chances of playing youth sports. It is no longer the best and most athletic kids that will be playing the sport, but rather the kids whose parents can afford to write the check for them to play. The number of children who play youth sports today as opposed to 15 years ago has dramatically changed and that number is expected to continue to decrease if commercialization continues to increase. This pay-to-play format has not only been implemented in sport travel teams but has also found its way into some high school varsity programs. In 2011, 61% of high schools in the United States had some charge for participation in their varsity sports. Yes, sports can be expensive to play, especially when traveling is involved, but we need to have alternatives for those who cannot afford any other option. We have a severe obesity crisis in the United States, and by minimizing the opportunities for youth to play sports, we are sending ourselves into a severe downward spiral. But what happens when children who play youth sports make it to the college level? Does the commercialization stop? Unfortunately, it only becomes worse, and we see even greater acts of this in many of the large universities across the country. There is a constant mentality of a win at all costs and revenue at all costs in big-time universities that we lose sight of what it all means. The sport that endures much of the heat from this discussion is football, a multi-billion dollar per year company that is under speculation for exploiting players by not paying them for the revenue they bring into the program. An example includes the University of Alabama, a big time university part of the Big Ten Conference. The cost for football team's coaching staff is $10 million, with head coach Nick Saban paid $5 million to himself. The problem with this is not only the grossly overpaid coaching staff, but rather the drastically underpaid athletes, which are lucky if they get their entire college tuition paid for, if they even finish their degree, that is, because many find themselves leaving before finishing college due to injury or transferring to the professional league. But in a multi-billion dollar business, what is a scholarship actually worth in comparison to revenue that these players are bringing in? The average scholarship for a college athlete is $23,000 compared to the average worth of a college athlete calculated by the National College Players Association, which is $120,000 for a football player and $265,000 for a men's basketball player. So with programs bringing in so much revenue, why are the players getting the short end of the stick on this nonprofit organization? Alabama is not the only school under fire, though. 75 other big-time sports universities allow themselves to operate under this title of a nonprofit educational extracurricular activity, which means taxes are not paid and more revenue is collected. This idea rests far from the mission of big-time college sports teams and the stated purpose of integrating intercollegiate athletics into higher education so that the educational experience of the student-athlete is paramount. The goal of these programs is always discussed to be the value and importance of student-athletes getting an education, but in cases like these, the actions of the schools show a different side of sports. The idea of a revenue at all cost, not the ethics of a good education. A debate on CNN discusses the idea of paying college athletes at big-time colleges for the revenue that they bring in. People Here's a clip. The, fi- you know, the, the, the final 64, if you will. Why couldn't there be, for places that make money, an ability to simply spin it off as a corporation? Well, you could do that, but that would change the model completely. And, and you're right. That is exactly what some people are talking about. I'm not so sure we want to see what that looks like. Because then if you take <clears throat> college sports out of the academic model, and put them into the economic model, then, of course, you're paying market rate for players. 
you're going to have to pay workers' compensation. You're going to have to pay insurance. There's not a university president in the country that wants to go into but, that. But isn't this... No, no, I'm sure... Look, university presidents don't want to because they're making money. <laughs> I mean, if you're a university president, you're getting paid fine. You're doing great. And by the way, if you recruit somebody who's a really great player, they may be worth $500 million to your institution by the time you get done with alumni grants and all these other things. So you love it. The question is, isn't it sort of hypocritical to pretend that the NCAA is really this wonderful charitable institution that's quote unquote a non-profit uh, because they design themselves so they don't make any profit, but they, you know, $1.7 million to the president is a pretty good salary for a non-profit. Isn't it hypocritical? The answer is yes. And I have been, there's no one who's been more critical of the NCA than I. Oh, but this is one of those things, I think, where they say there's, there's, uh, this is the best system we have. They're all, they're, no, nothing's great, but I would hate to see what this is, there's a reason, for example, that the Big Ten has said if the Ed O'Bannon case, which is another part of, of paying players uh, for their likenesses, if the Ed O'Bannon case actually loses, the Big Ten says we're out of college sports. We're becoming Division Three now. I, I can't wait to see that. I'm a Big Ten person myself. Point being, though, again, I think that, it's, you know, it's clearly we're saying there's trouble, <laughs> but Let this is the best it. system, and I wonder if there could be any... How would you benefit. respond to that? At the end of the day, we can recognize that the commercialization of sport has come a long way in the past few decades, and it has caused much debate over the well-being of the athletes and the programs that they are involved in.